I knew that schools would be closing due to some communications I had with several friends who work in positions that are in the know. What I didn't fully grasp and doubt many others understood is this would continue for an indefinite time period. On January 25th, I began posting to tell friends to prepare. I saw that what was happening in China was coming here. I began shopping and getting non-perishable food. At the end of February, I felt well prepared. Seeing the lines of people and hoarding of toilet paper didn't bother me. I had already done my shopping weeks before everyone else. In fact, the cashier at Costco asked me if I was preparing. I said yes for the zombie apocalypse. He laughed and told me that it should be a class in high school, how to survive and prepare. What I didn't know at that moment was my joke was becoming a reality. The zombie apocalypse was actually beginning. You may not have realized it yet, but we are officially in the age of zombies. If you have ever watched The Walking Dead, you have an ideal of what a zombie looks like. However, often Hollywood gets the details wrong, because in the real life version, zombies are being infected at an alarming rate. You may be asking yourself, how will I know if I've been infected? You see, the coronavirus is not the outbreak. Opinions and experts are. In social media, is the virus attacking humanity. And sure, I know as I say this, I too have become a zombie of information. The irony is not lost on me that you're hearing these words through my very own social media account. And like you, I'd like to think that I'm balanced in facts and in reasoning. No one wants to be wrong. And that's how we become zombies. Realizing that you become a zombie is the first step to recovery. I may be the resistance to your truth, or you may decide that you like what I'm about to share. Either way, we're both correct. Or are we? I always like the slogan, facts don't have feelings. Except, I always want to be mindful that feelings matter. If feelings didn't matter, we would have a cold and unloving society. And if facts didn't carry weight, we would have a confused and chaotic society. And this seems to be where we find ourselves in 2020. Facts versus feelings. Do we acknowledge facts or do we acknowledge feelings? It's two polar opposite sides. And if we recognize a fact, who gets the right to state what is factual in a world that bends facts to be recognized as truth to make a point? Or do we realize feelings when everyone seems to have something they are hurt over? And so we have become zombies. I'm not sure where exactly humanity lost its way, but likely it was around the time of MySpace. Because in life, it's not about me, it's about us. Perhaps the site spoke to a nation that was waiting to be turned into narcissists, into this instant gratification for me mentality. Because it was MySpace that was the place where you invited your friends and then they vied to be in your top eight. Bands spammed you to like their page and their music would become instant famous. Around this time, we also began judging people on websites like Hot or Not, where we decided whether beauty went beyond skin deep. And ironically, Face Mash, the knockoff of Hot or Not, went on to become Facebook, a website created by the shallowness of Mark Zuckerberg, who is now the number one informant in the world. Algorithms and data collection are being weaponized against you to influence your thoughts. And despite this fact, we log back on, screaming, brains, to get our next fix of our echo chamber, the one that sends the dopamine with every like and addicts the brain into its next fix of ego and importance. In fact, the New York Times published that what you see is chosen by a mysterious algorithm that takes into account hundreds of factors, such as how often you comment on your Aunt Sally's photos, how much your friends are talking about a colleague's post and her new job, and whether you always watch those cat videos. Facebook is now approaching 1.69 billion zombies in 2020. That's over 20% of the world's population that are all signing up to be tracked and cataloged. Which brings me to our current state. Pew Research found that over 55% of people use social media as their primary source for news. Also, 
In Pew Research, CNN was trusted by 70% self-described liberal Democrats, but only 16% of conservative Republicans. In comparison, Fox News was trusted by 75% of conservative Republicans, but only 12% of liberal Democrats. Further research showed 43% of U.S. adults trusted Fox News for political news, with 40% distrusting. So who is right? Does CNN lie? Is Fox News not trustworthy? The answer seems to be hidden in our own social media. There is no middle ground. You're either on one pole or the other, and the magnetic north seems willing to shame any opposing force. Then we get to the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Has there ever been a man so hated and yet so loved in such a polarizing way? It seems his presidency is just following these same trends. My own children at the age of four and seven told me Donald Trump was a very bad man and they were afraid of him. Shocked at the words, I asked where they heard that. They told me that their grandparents talked about him nonstop and they heard he was a racist. Neither my wife nor myself have ever spoken politics with our children. Now instantly, many of you, if you're still even watching this and listening, you've made up your mind about my words already. Some of you deemed to know what I was going to say and present before the first paragraph was out of my mouth. That tells me a lot more about this polarization. And when I mentioned Fox News or CNN, you also had a reaction. And then I said MAGA himself, Donald Trump. And now you're really curious about what I'm going to say next, or you're about to hit the stop button. It's okay, you're a zombie. Once you understand you've been infected, it's not too late. Remember what I said, zombies are not like in The Walking Dead. We are still turning. The cure is available, but it is going to be difficult. Operation Ivy. No, that is not some conspiracy theory code name. It's a punk rock band. They said it best. All I know is that I don't know. All I know is that I don't know nothing. See, there are two politicians that I've listened to and been impressed with in life. Both are on opposite ends of ideology, Ron Paul and Bernie Sanders. Both told things like it was, and people discounted their message. Ron Paul preached about our debt and how it would topple our country like the Roman Empire. He stated we need to change Washington and get the corruption out. Bernie Sanders talked about class inequality and how 1% of the world owns all of the wealth and how unjust our financial system has become to the average working family. And what happened to both? Ron Paul was labeled a crazy old isolationist and Bernie was labeled a communist hypocrite. Again, we went to extremes, polar opposites, while their truth lay somewhere in the middle. The system is rigged, and if you pay attention to your social media and your news networks, you will find that you're the target. Their systems are what's being used against you. Today, while I was watching the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds fly overhead, it immediately turned political. Well, I guess Donald Trump has his pain for this waste. Again, Mission accomplished, zombie is turning. This is not to say that Donald Trump hasn't had some absolutely asinine things or done horrible things, but the thought control is now successful. The Me Too movement was necessary in so many ways to break down the patriarchal structure around so much of this world, and then it got hijacked and weaponized. Justice Kavanaugh was guilty in the court of public opinion with actress Alyssa Milano sitting behind in the camera's view for the nightly news. Now that Joe Biden is in the headlines, does Alyssa Milano care? The Democratic nominee for president is being accused of sexual assault. Does this even matter? I mean, Trump called his words a locker room banter. What's Biden going to say to explain it? Or is social media and the news just going to control the narrative? Which brings us to today. Conspiracy theories aside, the coronavirus is either one of the most dangerous threats to society, or an overhyped and misdiagnosed virus that is much less deadly than stated. Again, we're polarized. I'm going to choose to take the middle ground, but let's explore with common sense the other two poles. Poll number one. The novel coronavirus is so bad, world governments are shutting down. 
common sense tells me scientists and leaders have information that we should be scared of. We don't shut down a world's economy simply because less than 2% may die. Yes, I said it, it sounds harsh, but people are dying every day. Likely you would see a slight increase, but it wouldn't look a ton different. Conspiracy theorists say, the new world order and Bill Gates are doing this to go global currency and vaccinate and microchip everyone. And governors are taking away our rights to see how far they can push things before we resist, see? I'll take common sense for a thousand, Trebek. The most likely answer is almost always correct. In fact, I've been asking several questions that still have not been answered. Number one, why is the recovery rate so low? Number two, why has there been no follow-up on four splices of DNA that are in COVID-19 that are shared with HIV? The studies I read, which I will post with this, show that the statistical likelihood of this being accidental are small. It would also explain why the world is so concerned. If we trusted the news, perhaps we'd listen. But who would report this? <laughs> Poll number two states we need herd immunity, and the cold can't be worse than the cure. There's some solid validity to this argument of common sense as well. Never before has there been a vaccine developed for coronavirus, and the flu needs a yearly shot, which is not even 80% effective at prevention. The people at Poll 2 are also calling for the end of government quarantines and the reopening of the economy. Evidence is showing the food supply is growing in threat, and suicides and domestic violence is on the rise. Perhaps shutting things down is going to kill more in the long term, but not from the virus. But the main issue is these two zombies don't have a brain to communicate. Poll 1 is yelling at Poll 2 and vice versa. And in the meantime, those that feel awoke are likely just in their own echo chamber created by their false idol, Mark Zuckerberg. 50 days, and we're zombies. The truth, however, is in the middle. Poll 1 and 2 do not want people to die. They both want a cure or a vaccine. They both want to return to normal. They both want to have freedoms back without mandates. But can these zombies stop quarreling long enough to see their shared goals? Maybe only if the revolution is not misdirected, but rather back at the social media web the zombies are stuck in. And yes, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and all the others, they're in that web of social media too. So if you stayed with me this long, congrats. I'm just another person with an opinion. But no, I am willing to listen to you, converse, and leave my web in search of facts because I care so passionately with my feelings on my sleeve. If you thought I was going to offer a solution, you're wrong. I'm a zombie too. So perhaps I have nothing interesting to offer. Let's all stop turning and find a cure.